Hello all listeners, all my relatives, brothers and sisters from all walks of life. It is Columbia Hopped. I am here once again. Um, we are at the Soul to Soul Climate Summit here in San Francisco. We're at the El Rasa Plaza and it's just in downtown San Francisco. It's been such a wonderful day. Um, I've been interviewing amazing people from a lot from the Central Americas as well as South America, Colombia, Brazil, um, and Ecuador as well as in Mexico so it's been absolutely amazing and I've been talking to a lot of locals a lot of um, regional and um, national um, people so it's been absolutely amazing so let's go ahead and get started I am here with um, two individuals and so go ahead and introduce yourself I myself uh, Rudra Deep Chakrabarti I'm uh, actually from India but I moved to Bay Area six years before uh, I spent some time, like I lived in uh, Denmark also, and uh, uh, I do theater, like, uh, so me and uh, Decoy Gallerina, uh, who will introduce us right now, we both uh, run a theater company called Theater Movement International in Bay Area. So the main uh, mission of this uh, ensemble, our theater, was to uh, make indigenous theater more visible in because the mainstream theater here doesn't cover that in the United States so we thought of an alternative platform where indigenous people are not invisibilized so we want to cover more themes on alternative themes on immigration issues and uh, what is happening right now in our surrounding about environment so all these kind of uh, indigenous subjects uh, which were invisibilized and unheard, so we wanted to make it in the forefront. Uh, so from 2014, we are actively working in Bay Area with a self-funded theater project. Uh, we are associated with, um, uh, with New Mexico and Oklahoma and Four Corners also. We do a lot of uh, study tours there as Deco has tribe is uh, Chiricahua Apache and uh, their tribal center is in Oklahoma. So we are always uh, taking help from them about research and dramaturgy. And uh, we do a lot of political theater in the Bay Area and performance art. And uh, we also include a lot of um, musicality, a lot of uh, radical music, uh, which we call radical medic medicine music in our projects. So I will let uh, Decoy speak about it more. Um, hi, I am Decoy Gallerina. I'm Chiricahua, which means the people in our language. And Apache means enemy in our enemy's language. Um, I'm a direct descendant of Cochise. Our group um, was taken prisoner of war and shipped to many uh, prison of war camps. And in that process, we lost over 90% of our people, less than 100, just over 100 years ago, we lost more than 90% of our people. In that process, we lost a great amount of our, you know, our ceremonial aspects, our language, our, our foods, just everything. And I have been blessed to be able to train with the, our tribal historian and linguist, Leland Michael Darrow, who basically, one-handedly, with a lot of love and support, saved our tribe. He dedicated his life to learning everything he could about the tribe and reclaiming and doing research. And I've been blessed to, do re uh, to, to study with him in Oklahoma and do research and all, all kinds of stuff. And, at this point, I can uh, produce a woman, a girl's maturation ceremonial regalia. I was also, I trained with my grandmother um, when I was from two until I was about 13 when she, she had to leave because of the problems that indigenous people have. Um, so, and I, and then I was blessed, I was traveling quite a bit and in my travels, I came back to California. I went to stay with the tribe and train some more and different things. And so about six years ago, or six or so, six years ago, I met, I met Rudra Jeep, just serendipitously, whatever you call that. Um, I met him and 
we um, hit it off in terms of, you know, personal and theater and ideas and, and different things. So our tribe took uh, Rujadeep back to our prisoner of war place to train with our tribal historian for about three weeks um, and to see our prisoner of war place and get a feel for our tribe in that situation. And then um, the next year we took him to all over the Southwest so he could get a feel for our traditional area um, and then to also um, go to the maturation ceremony where we stayed with relatives and he got to meet a lot of our family, see the ceremonies, be with our spirits, get blessed by white painted woman, Estena um, Leche. And you know, it's, it's been beautiful. And then when we got back, I interviewed a lot of people from the tribe, wrote a play, uh, and we presented it at San Francisco International Arts Festival um, as a solo with, we had a beautiful sound designer, Miguel Garcia, who's Mescalero Apache, which we're very blessed to have that, get that going on, and lifelong musician. <laughs> so. Wow, that's amazing. Well, um, for starters, I am originally from New Mexico. I am from Albuquerque and was born in Santa Fe. So, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool to hear that, that you guys do a lot of work down there and are from, or, um, you know, you have the connections with with the people down there so what that, tribe are you just let me let's. so i am actually eight tribes <laughs> i'm full-blooded um i have my pinky's french that's how much french i am yeah and so but the majority of me is native american i'm enrolled sack and fox of the oklahoma um sack and fox nation of oklahoma and i'm also dakota sioux navajo omaha delaware winnebago and iway and then macaw from uh, the northwest Oh, wow. so <laughs> so Rudra doesn't look East Indian, Asian Indian. He looks, I don't know, <laughs> something. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, you could you could really pass. I mean, I, I I get I get everything too. You could pass for a lot of different things. I'm I'm used to it, but yeah, I do. I think yeah. I think it's the, the era of the hybrids. Yeah, because I identify <laughs> as Rebel Irish and Rebel Apache, right? In the the. So, um, yeah, so it's funny because everybody is hybrid, so hybrid. We're just humans, mm -hmm. but we have some basic roots, right? Yeah. That are, that are, that mix. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Also, you can tell about uh, your connection with Alan Hauser in oh, New Mexico okay, okay. a little bit as she's from New Mexico. Okay. So our, our family, so Alan Hauser, who is the grandfather of native sculpture and uh, progressive art, um, that's what he's known for. That's not me talking. So he was my grandmother's favorite nephew. And I was, I had the opportunity to make him, I, I am one of the tribe's main beaters, bead workers. So I was, uh, I was, got to make him, he designed a, a, a walking stick, a cane. So I made him a walking stick and I made uh, Bob Houses, who is his son, who's also an amazing sculptor, much older now, but I made him a cane. So I made three canes for the Hauser family. So we're, they're, they're big, big artists. They have a, a quarry, have their own quarry. I mean, this is like materialistic stuff I don't really care about, but they're really prominent as, you know, making a statement that natives exist and natives exist as artists and breaking through the barriers of white, you know, culture dominating everything. I went to Institute of American Indian Arts, and I've been to a whole bunch of other universities and gotten degrees from them. And yeah. my grandmother was an artist, my father was an artist. So I've been an artist my whole life, mm -hmm. but I never learned one thing about Native art until I went to the Institute of American Indian Arts, yeah. which was amazing. And then it was just complete immersion right. in Native culture. Now I look, I'm really light, so I, I so. You know, people think I'm all kinds of things, and my hair is a little red, so that's my Irish, you know. But I have really, really strong. I was raised with my my relatives, and you know, and so and so uh, so we're working on a lot of projects that open up and de-invisibilize, yes, de-invisibilize, mediafy, yeah. you know, get it out there, native uh, native issues. Um, in, in very elaborate and very crazy and experimental, like our, our project, so we have Theater Movement International and then we have our project uh, Radical Medicine and we're covering arts and um, you know, experimental arts and costuming and we have a journal for Theater Movement International. Um, why don't you talk about the journal? Yeah, actually uh, recently we thought about uh, publishing, you know, 
the work, the process of work which we are doing in theatre, you know, how we rehearse, uh, what kind of things we take, when we travel, what exactly we learned in the study trip. So it, it is something like a um, visual diary, it's a little bit creative, like we create our own paintings there, our own visuals which we are inspired when we do our rehearsals and practice. We take inspiration from those visuals, so we keep it as it is, it's not like other magazines or like a textbook kind of. It's, um, uh, it's very creative with our own visuals and our own writings. And it's not exactly a zine, it's more like a journal because it's more formal and it covers historic information but in a really creative, creative way. Um, Rudra documented a lot of the things that we did during the, the tour so they're very personal. Yeah, five volumes we have already published for that and some of our work is also in YouTube. Like if somebody... Um, I think type uh, Theatre Movement International in YouTube and our uh, production's name is uh, Water is Life which was uh, inspired with Standing Rock Movement and a lot of, it's all political theatre but we talk about social justice movement and about uh, protecting water and environment. So uh, these are some of the things and as I am from India, you know, I have observed um, our indigenous uh, communities in India. So the problems are same all over the world. Right. Where I, I lived a little bit uh, before moving to Bay Area, I was in Denmark. In Denmark, uh, because they occupied um, Greenland, you know, a lot of natives are there in Greenland. So when I, I was in Denmark, I found that it is same same kind of problem which we are having here. Or in India also, I have observed the same problems with uh, indigenous tribes that how their rights are violated, how, how people in the name of mining, you know, are exploiting the tribe. So sometimes we, we have done some cross-pollinated work, me and Decoy, called Indian meets Indian, where we took out themes with uh, uh, tribal people from India and also from United States. So that is our journey, all these uh, indigenous themes we want to connect, Canada, Hawaii, New Zealand, it can go to Africa, India, Thailand, as rainforest is universal like that, we want to make it like that, you know. So because its stories are same, themes are same, and our work, uh, we are coming with an upcoming uh, performance art project on uh, the separation in happening in the border with parents and children in the United States. So we thought that uh, first of all the indigenous people were affected. They had this uh, problem much before which uh, many people doesn't know in the United States that first time the indigenous people suffered a lot when they were separated from their parents. So that is our current theme which you can explain more. Yeah, so I'm um, in the process of writing a piece about uh, a little boy um, in boarding school, going through the boarding school experience, but it takes it from a deep in internal perspective where he's having the experience of having his hair cut. Um, he doesn't know where he is, what he's going through, what's going on, what they're going to do to him. He knows that they're mean and they're uh, leading him into a room. They have scissors and they're toying with him with the scissors. And he thinks they're, they're savages and they're going to um, uh, cut him and, and uh, feed him somehow. Anyway, so it's from Deep Internal. Yeah. This is a new thing we're working on. We did, uh, the play we did before was um, Homecoming Chirikai Wet and the uh, Odyssey. And so that was uh, dealing with, um, it went all the way from before, before, uh, what do you call it, before we were... Pre-colonial? Pre-colonial. So it, it has, it's called In Harmony. So it's a time of a young girl in the mountains with her family and all of their, their ceremonies and the things that they do in that family in the mountains. They're going there for the summertime up above Mes the Mescalero territories and that. And they're really having a nice time. Then it goes through their, their journey um, uh, where they're beginning to struggle. So there's the struggle. And this is all movement and theater and music and like a lot of body, uh, body dynamic, body movements and things going on with the spoken word. Um, I'm a dancer and a, a movement person and I and singer or whatever. Um, anyway, so then they go, so it travels from, 
from the pre-colonial harmony all the way through where they are on the tr on the trains and they're suffering to where they have all the losses and then it comes out to um, like in the 1930s and it ends up I learned all the coyote stories of our tribe and so Rudra and I did perform some of those for the tribe and so um, anyway it comes out the very last story well then they have uh, Grandpa Coyote and he is has been so destroyed that he steals a dollar a fake dollar from his little grandchildren who knew and who planted the dollar in the in the couch just to give him a hard time and then it goes to Killing Indians, which is more current, like in the 1950s. There's a grandmother, and she's um, uh, she goes out to the fields, and she picks... Uh, do you remember what she picks? She picks cotton, and she also picks something else. But the little boy is playing, and she sees him playing. Up ahead, she's picking her, her crop, and she sees him picking it. And she says, grandson, what are you doing? because he was wielding a stick, right, in some way. And he turns, he says, Grandma, I'm playing. I'm killing, I'm playing cowboys and Indians. I'm killing Indians. And she faints. And she, and he comes running to her and she said, and he says, Grandma, what's wrong? And she says, Grandson, don't you know, if you're killing Indians, you're killing your grandma. And so, and that's the one, that's, that's homecoming. So now we're beginning to work on, we haven't, I thought it might be called, did we say initiations maybe? And, and so initiations also takes a lot of history of the colonize, the colonization of our people and the destruction that has been going on. So it goes from, it's going to go through a variety of boarding school experiences. The first being a little boy, right when um, the tribes were being put into boarding schools, the very first. And then it's gonna go around to where um, in the 1930s and 40s, when the next generation was put into boarding schools, it's going to kind of go through this older boy's experience. But the end of his story is that he ends up in a house with his family and he almost kills his niece um, because he gets blackout drunk from all of his rage and he's drinking and he almost kills his niece in that fit of all that rage from all that abuse that he's experienced through his life and that his family and our peoples have experienced he almost kills his niece through all of that rage yeah. and then it's going to come up to another level so it's a, it's a lot of movement through our history of us as our peoples and the things that we've experienced into healing right. and healing is all of us doing this yeah it's all our language is contemporary our theater language uh, we can say that it goes in different forms from postmodernism to you know different kind of format we are working theater anthropology is one of the subject which uh, is very much uh, involved in our search and um, environment because that is the main issue in the world now about climate change i think theater should cover all these things and other theater is still now doing shakespeare and other entertaining theater productions in a way but we are trying to go deep yeah. we are trying for climate change and these kind of subjects yeah and you know that's very relevant too because um i i truly believe that this movement it starts with native youth indigenous youth uh, well i mean it started with my parents and, and forefathers of course that's where it starts but it's it's picking up momentum i truly believe with our native youth i mean we're young we're we're like we're lit <laughs> and you know we're we're like out here and so i i truly appreciate you uh speaking with me in this media van and coming out to this event uh it's it's definitely very healing to hear that um, you're facilitating an environment um, for, for people to, especially youngins, to, um, to, to reach out to. So. And so everybody, so, so our two projects are inclusive. So what we do is we have a lot of guest performers. Um, Radical Medicine uh, is uh, focused, uh, kind of an open, so they're open-ended cross-platform, multimedia. Many artists um, are involved in it. And um, 
we're doing like I will record people telling their stories then get live music as well as loops and rhythm and, and stuff and put them together in stories and um, so we're doing it we're on Bandcamp we're Radical Medicine on Bandcamp.com TheaterMovementInternational.org uh, RadicalMedicine.org uh, websites we're on YouTube Decoy Gallerina under Theater Movement International and Radical Medicine tomorrow we are opening the Climate Music Project at 11.30 a.m. with a prayer from, our, from the tribe. And um, we'll be doing excerpts from our music theater, which is radical, it, it's, board, it's punk rock, goth, experimental, with lots of movement and dance and buteau and all kinds of stuff going on in it. It'll be kind of simplified tomorrow, but we're opening the, uh, the, the Climate Music Project at Civic Center on Fulton, uh, in front of the library, there's a stage-like arena there. And um, we're also inviting people to join us. Um, I've interviewed um, Patricia St. Ange from Nasty Sweat Lodge Project, and I've interviewed a lot of other people, and Joe Whittle, of, uh, he's native, he, um, he's with the Guardian UK. And so I've done, I do fun pieces and crazy pieces as well as very, we do very, very serious pieces. Ruder and I did a beautiful piece called Honey Gatherers, which he wrote. Tell us about that. Yeah, Honey Gatherers is actually about, uh, you know, street performers and observe from close proximity when I was in India. So it's more about the folkloric uh, life of India where boatmen sing, you know, they have their different kind of music and songs. It covers about uh, any street performers who comes from like background of gypsies or boatmen or you know uh, clowns and different kind of. What's so. a what's a boatman? So she knows and what and Rudra is a beautiful singer and so he sings in that in all these different genres. It's Tell, just like what, what actually genres? you know because in uh, we have a lot of uh, rivers in India and because it has a the flow of the tributaries and the current in the river, you know, the direction the boats go. So they took music like that, you know, the music came that kind of emotion of the boat. Yeah. Same with the gypsies, because they are going with camels. Mm -hmm. When the camels goes to sand dunes, you know, there is up and down. So the music became like that. Wow. So I think it's like that and it is, you know, uh, I, I would say that this is what anthropology is, which I was telling her right now about like theater anthropology what we do is also like that how many different traditions and forms uh, comes up as performance same in music is also like that